Okay, so get ready for a deep dive, everybody. We're tackling dinosaurs today. Specifically, well, their extinction. We're all familiar with the Chicxulub impact, right? You know, that mm -hmm. massive asteroid that basically rearranged Mexico. It's been the number one suspect in the dinosaur's demise for ages. Yeah, and for good reason. I mean, that impact was a global reset button, no question. But, and here's where it gets really interesting, the story might be even more complex than we thought. Okay, now you've got my attention. More complicated than a giant space rock wiping out the dinosaurs. How so? Well, what if I told you there might have been not one, but two massive impacts right around the same time? Whoa, hold on. Two? Okay, now you're just messing with me. I wish they were. Yeah. No, that's where our star of the show today comes in. The Nadir Crater. Nadir Crater. First time I'm hearing this name, gotta be honest. It's off the coast of West Africa, actually. Buried under a whole lot of water. And here's the kicker. It's incredibly well-preserved. You see, craters, even huge ones, they don't tend to last on Earth. Erosion, you've got tectonic plates doing their thing, it all adds up. So this Nadir thing, it's like a pristine time capsule from way back then. Exactly. And thanks to this incredible 3D seismic imaging technology, we're getting a look inside like never before. It's giving us clues about the impact itself, like you wouldn't believe. Okay, well, don't leave me hanging. Paint me a picture. How big are we talking? This thing's about 9.2 kilometers across. Already a pretty bad day if you're in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. But get this. It's got this brim of messed up seabed around it, almost 23 kilometers across. Imagine someone punching the ocean floor so hard, the impact zone is twice the size of the fist. Now that's what I call leaving a mark. I bet looking at the inside of this crater with the 3D imaging is like, I don't know, lo looking back in time, right? It really is. We're seeing all the hallmarks, a central peak, these terraced walls, and the seismic data. It tells a wild story, too. There are these velocity differences in the rock formations. Very distinct. Velocity differences. Okay. For those of us who aren't geologists, break that down a bit. Basically, the impact wasn't just a surface-level thing. Mm -hmm. It was so powerful that it actually changed the rock itself on a fundamental level. Wow. I mean, the force needed for that, it's almost impossible to grasp. We're talking forces that could spawn mega tsunamis, cause the seafloor to basically liquefy over a huge area, uh. turning solid ground to, well, something like quicksand. It's hard to overstate how violent this was. So this wasn't just a local event, right? We're talking widespread chaos. Oh, absolutely. Think way beyond the impact site itself. We're talking a vast area, totally reshaped, like a cosmic bullseye but with, you know, a huge blast radius. Since you mentioned a bullseye, how do scientists even figure out where an asteroid came from after millions of years? That seems impossible. Well, this is where the 3D imaging really shines. They use the crater's asymmetry. One side of the rim is steeper, right? Mm. And they use that to figure out this asteroid came in at a low angle from the east-northeast. So it's like a cosmic detective story, using the scene to reconstruct the crime even millions of years later. That's a great way to put it. And that low impact angle, well, it raises some very interesting questions, especially when we start thinking about the possibility of this happening around the same time as the Chicxulub event. Okay, yeah, two massive hits, one right after the other. Uh, that's a lot to unpack. What could that mean for how we understand, you know, the whole dinosaur extinction event? Two massive impacts, one after the other. It's almost too much to wrap your head around. If Nadir really did happen close to Chicxulub, could they, you know, be connected somehow? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It's definitely possible, though. Like we were talking about before, Nadir, it might not have been a solo act. Maybe he was part of a bigger asteroid that broke up, you know, near Earth. So instead of one big hit, it's more like uh, throwing a handful of rocks at a target. You get multiple impacts. So not just one bad day for the dinosaurs, but a whole bunch of them in a row. Geologically speaking, yeah, you could say that. But seriously, if Nadir was part of a cluster like that, then the consequences for the planet, well, let's just say it would be pretty. Definitely not a fun time to be alive. But hold on. With Nadir being underwater, wouldn't that impact have been, I don't know, less bad than Chicxulub hitting land? You know, a lot of people think that, but it's a bit of a misconception. Land impacts, they throw up more dust and stuff into the atmosphere initially, sure. But underwater? That's a whole other kind of chaos. Like what? Give me the rundown. Think tsunamis, but on a scale you wouldn't believe. Waves potentially hundreds of feet high, radiating out from the impact site, wiping out coastlines for thousands of miles. And you mentioned liquefaction earlier, too. What happens when the seabed basically goes liquid? It's about as chaotic as it sounds, to be honest. Yeah. The seafloor loses its ability to support anything. 
underwater landslides, structures collapsing, total havoc if you're a sea creature. So even if you were far enough away from the impact, from the tsunamis, you'd still have to deal with a completely different ocean floor afterwards. Exactly. This wouldn't have been a local extinction event. These impacts, they would have had global consequences, ecologically speaking. This is all starting to sound pretty apocalyptic. Before we get lost in the doomsday scenarios, though, let's talk more about the impact itself. What would that sequence of events have actually looked like, you know, step by step? Okay, picture this. A gigantic asteroid, right, moving at an insane speed, slams into the ocean. The initial blast, it would have been like thousands of nuclear bombs all going off at once. Anything within, I don't know, a huge radius just vaporized instantly. I think you just redefined a bad day at the beach. Yeah, just a tad. So then, while the asteroid's vaporizing, the rock underneath it, it's getting superheated, compressed. And that's when the crater starts to form. Happens incredibly fast milliseconds, but the forces involved are mind-boggling. Imagine a pebble in a pond, but on a planetary scale. Okay, so we've got the initial blast, the crater's forming. What happens next? Well, all that water that got displaced has to go somewhere, right? Right. And that's where your mega tsunamis come in. The crater rim collapses outwards, and this massive wall of water just goes shooting out. We're talking speeds faster than a jet plane. So the first wave hits, and then... And then it gets worse. That initial wave, it, it travels outward, right? Mm. But that leaves a void where the impact was. So the water surrounding that area, it rushes back in to fill the void. And that, my friends, is what we call the research. Every bit as destructive as that first wave, maybe more so. It's like the ocean's playing a giant game of ping pong. You got it. <laughs> and each time those waves slam into the crater, they change it, carve it out even more, depositing all sorts of debris all mixed up. And the 3D imaging, it shows that all those jumbled layers of rock and sediment all churned up by those waves going back and forth. Man, the power of nature is incredible, isn't it? Or I guess in this case, the power of a giant space rock. It really makes you realize how insignificant we are in the grand scheme of things. Huh? Speaking of grand schemes, let's talk more about Nadir and Chicxulub. What are the odds of two huge impacts happening so close together? And could they be linked, do you think? It really makes you think, huh? two huge impacts, and not that far apart, time-wise anyway. If Nadir really did happen close to Chicxulub, I mean, could they be connected somehow? Is that even possible? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? It's definitely not impossible. Remember how we were talking about Nadir maybe being part of a cluster of impacts? Maybe a bigger asteroid that broke up near Earth? If that's the case, you're talking about a level of chaos that's hard to even imagine. Multiple impacts, tsunamis wiping out everything, seabeds turning into, what was it, quicksand? Yeah. It, it paints a pretty bleak picture. It really makes you rethink the whole extinction event, doesn't it? Absolutely. This isn't just about finding one more crater. This is about realizing just how vulnerable our planet is to these kinds of events. It's like finding a second smoking gun at a prehistoric crime scene. And it makes you think, without that 3D imaging, Nadir would still be down there, hidden under all that water. Exactly. This kind of technology, it's revolutionizing how we understand the past. It's like a window into events that, before, were totally invisible to us. We can peel back layers of time, see those incredible forces that shaped the world we live in. Makes you wonder what else is out there waiting to be discovered. But on a more serious note, if this kind of thing happened millions of years ago, I mean, it could happen again, right? That's the thing about space. It's full of surprises. We can't predict when or where the next big impact will be. Not exactly. But we do know that Earth gets hit by smaller objects all the time. Thankfully, most of them burn up in the atmosphere. But Nadir, it's a good reminder that the threat is real. So not if, but when. Geologically speaking, yeah, pretty much. But that doesn't mean we're helpless. The more we learn about these impacts, the better prepared we are. Maybe one day we'll be able to see it coming and actually do something about it, you know, deflect it. Well, that's a comforting thought. For now, though, it seems like we have a lot more questions than answers, especially when it comes to Nadir and uh, how it all ties into the dinosaur's extinction. That's what I love about science, though, right? Every discovery leads to more questions. Nadir has definitely shaken up our understanding of a pivotal moment in Earth's history. As we learn more, I'm sure it'll reveal even more secrets. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's deep dive. It's been quite a journey, wouldn't you say? It has. It really makes you think about our place in the universe. You know, we're part of something so much bigger than ourselves, and we're still figuring it all out.
And who knows what incredible discoveries are still out there just waiting to be made. Maybe our next deep dive will be even more, well, earth shattering. Until then, thanks for joining us as we explore the mysteries of the Nadir Creator.